the promise. Welcome back to Short Points, where we share thoughts on the Sabbath school lessons. The last couple of weeks, we looked at Abraham's journey with God, and this lesson is the culmination. Abraham followed God's voice, they built a relationship, entered into a covenant, and there was a big promise for a future. And now we are looking at what happened with the promise. The main parts of the lesson as I see them are at Mount Moriah and after Mount Moriah. Years of hope, disbelief, love, belief, trust and wait finally came to a miraculous birth. Abraham and Sarah got to the promised son, Isaac. But then God asked Abraham the most horrible request one can make to offer Isaac as burnt offering sacrifice at Mount Moriah? I mean, in some extent, my mind refuses to process this. How can God even pronounce such words? This was a terrible practice of the nations around, but how can God even refer to that? I am astonished also by Abraham's obedience. He argued with God about Sodom and Gomorrah, but not about his son's life? It seems that he has learned not to argue with God, an incredible state of mind and trust. I can't imagine what went through his mind and heart, honestly, I don't want to, but it must have been something similar as to what God experienced when sin entered our world and he had to put an end of the life he created. There are so many lessons in this experience. The promise to Abraham was for a future, to be a father of many nations, but also a way through whom we can all have a future, future of restoration and out of sin. Isaac's birth, as miraculous it may be according to human standards, couldn't solve the problem with sin. Isaac had to die. We all have to die as a consequence of our disconnect from the source of life. The solution and the fulfillment of the promise was not in the sacrifice of Isaac, but in the substitution provided by God, the sacrifice of Jesus. Abraham had the opportunity to experience this incredible reality of the gospel. After the experience of Moriah, the lesson goes through three smaller stories that conclude the narrative for Abraham's journey. Well, Sarah died. We don't know much else. Did she know about Moriah? How did she go through that? It's certainly an experience that can't leave anyone unaffected. We also learned that she is the only woman whose ears are mentioned in the Bible. This is interesting. And the text and details around her death suggest her importance to the story. And she is the first one buried in the promised land. Abraham acquired land for the burial, indicating, indicating intention to settle permanently in the promise. Then Isaac married Rebekah. Abraham didn't want Isaac to marry a Canaanite, so there is a special mission to get a bride under God's leadership and guidance. It's a story of prayer, fulfillment of prayer, God's providence, and about human freedom. Rebekah had a choice not to follow and not to come for Isaac. Then we learn that Abraham got married again at old age and he got more children. There are some interesting details there about the children from his wives and concubines and the promise, but I will defer you to the study guide if you're interested to dig a bit more. So, what will I take from this lesson? Hashtag lesson in one. Abraham's journey taught him not to argue with God. The promise for a future is anchored in the substitution, substitute sacrifice by Jesus. And Abraham trusted, was obedient to extreme, and experienced grace. Next week, the study will continue with Jacob, the subplanter.